Thanks for stopping by. Today is part one of my modular mobile workshop workbench cubes. The first one I'm going to show you is how to make one with doors and adjustable shelves. Let's get to it. I'm going to also show in later videos a way you can do this with drawers or maybe even a flip top option. These cabinets are going to be built out of one sheet of three quarter plywood. And the first thing that we need to do is take the plywood and break it down into three pieces. You should get yourself some kind of straight edge. I'm using my shop built track saw and you want to cut the plywood into three pieces that are 31 and a half inches. Once we get the wheels on it, the cabinet top is going to sit 36 inches off the floor. When you're breaking your plywood down with a circular saw, you want the good side or the finished side facing down. That'll reduce the amount of tear out. You can tape it if you want to, but this is a workshop cabinet. I'm not that worried about it. And the inside's not really going to matter to me if there's a little bit of tear out. If you didn't know already, three quarter plywood is not three quarters of an inch thick. Sometimes it's 23 30 seconds, sometimes it's 19 millimeters. It depends on a lot of different factors. I'm not going to bother trying to measure that. I want these cabinets to be square when they're finished. So I took these two little pieces, these are cutoffs from when I broke it down into the three sections, and I'm going to place them at the edge of the plywood here that I already cut for the front. I'm going to make sure they're nice and flush to the edge. And I'm just going to make a mark. And this distance right here is how wide I want to cut the pieces for the sides. And in my case, that works out to be just slightly over 22 and 7 16 So if you cut your side pieces correctly, when you take your two scraps, put them at the edge and butt your side piece up against them, you should be flush on both sides and almost ready for assembly. Since this cabinet's going to have adjustable shelves, I need to drill holes for the shelf pins. You could buy a jig for it, but I just like to use pegboard. It's cheap and it works great. Then just get yourself a good bit. I like to use a brad point bit. You get less tear out and I have a stop collar on here. You can use masking tape to mark your depth. Just be careful because the masking tape can slide up over time. And start drilling. And when you're finished, just flip it over and do the other one. You want these to be mirror images of each other. I have all my shelf pin holes drilled. Now all that's left is to put some pocket hole screws. You could just as easily make this with some screws coming in from the outside. Just make sure you countersink them. But this is the way I'm going about it. Holes, pocket holes for the back, the bottom, and the top. Or is it the back, the bottom, and the top? Either way, they should be mirror images. All right, I'm ready for glue up, and I'm going to start by gluing the back onto the bottom. When you're using pocket screws, if that's the way you're going to go about it, if you're driving your screw in this way, the screw is going to want to pull this piece past. 
So you're going to have to clamp this up somehow. For me, and something this big, I found the easiest thing to do is just put it on the workbench. Yeah, I'll get a little bit of squeeze out, but it's easier for me to wipe up a little bit of glue than figure out some crazy clamping contraption. If you don't have a workbench this big, just do it on the floor. And if you cut everything right, your pieces should be the same width and it should flush up on both ends. And don't get too carried away with these screws. It's just going into plywood. So it's easy to strip them out. And the same thing with the side pieces now. Once you're all done, flip it over and put the other side on. Now when you go to put the top on, you just need to line it up in these two corners and along the sides. The only difference is you'll have your head inside there and if you're using an impact, it's going to give you a headache. These are the casters that I'm going to be using for this cabinet. And what's really nice about these, as you screw this orange part here, this foot comes down and it becomes solid. So it can roll around on the wheel, put it where you want it, and then turn these orange things and it's going to be just as solid as if it was sitting on feet. A lot easier option than messing around with some kind of movable base. When you're putting these on, just make sure that you have them set back far enough so that the wheels don't bang into each other if you have two of these screwed together. Now let me show you what to do with the doors. Since I'm putting doors on this cube, I took a quarter inch off the top. That way I won't have any rubbing issues at the top and the bottom and I cut the panel in half. Now I just need to put the hinges in. That was a fail. I guess these cheap bits aren't that good. That's better. Let's see if I can clean this up. If you're going to build a cabinet like this, you want to make sure the hinges you get are full overlay hinges because these are frameless cabinets. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for hinges. I just set my framing square on the bottom of the cabinet and I'll use that to set the height for the door. And then just throw some screws in there. Once I get a shelf in there, the doors won't overclose like that. They just need something to hit against since they're full overlay hinges. Now let me show you how I'm going to screw these things together. So to connect these together, I'm just going to drill holes on the sides that I want to connect two and three quarters from the edge. So I'll drill them here and the other three corners. And I'll put a T-nut on the inside of one cabinet and I'll use a quarter inch bolt with a fender washer on the other. And that hole is a little bigger than quarter inch, so I'll have some play to get some adjustment, hopefully get the tops all flush. Here it is finished. I already put some of my sanding stuff in here. I can put the shelves wherever I need for whatever equipment. And I can roll this thing around wherever I need it to go. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and how versatile these cubes are. They're so versatile, in fact, I built a few others. I built one with drawers. I made one into a router table. I made one into a flip up cabinet. And since these are square, you can put them together side by side or back to back. They still move around plenty easily enough. You can make an L shape if you want. Or you can put them together straight in a line, which is what I'm going to do. You could still roll them, 
but it's getting heavy. I really appreciate you taking the time to stop and watch my video. Hopefully you got some ideas from it. Maybe you'll build some of these cubes or something like it. And make sure you hit that subscribe button to see what I come up with next. Thanks for watching. My modular mobile workshop, my modular mobile workshop workbench series. I forgot to say cubes.